morning. How are you? I couldn't be better. Good. Glad to hear that. Have, having we song by fun. We yep. need to have fun, everybody. Yes. Life's too short. Enjoy it. Have fun. So, had our board meeting. Uh, kind of a delayed one. Had it yesterday. Before we get into that, though, one, one thing that we've just finally got back in place: valet parking. It's, yeah. It's on a limited basis right now. We still need to hire some more people, but we've got a couple folks. So. Uh, yeah, those who've been saying, when's valet parking coming back? It's back. Good. And uh, it's just such a, a good service for the folks. That they can come up there, especially if they're for physical therapy and it's difficult to get from the parking lot into the building. They park at the front door. We'll get their car parked for them. When they come out, we pick it up and bring it back. So valet parking's back. Kind of a limited basis. We want to expand it as we get some more folks. And we're still looking. So if you you know want, want some part-time work, uh, contact our human resources department and uh, you can talk to them about valet parking. So, glad to have it back finally. And as long as you don't have any grand theft auto charges, chances are that uh, you could have this part-time job. Yeah, they won't let me, they, they've seen me drive cars, I cannot do it. So, uh, something about being on two wheels going around the corner, they just don't like that. So. Yeah, yeah, I can't do that. Maybe can't with your that. own, but not with anybody Right, else. right. So, uh, started the board meeting yesterday, we had Deb Van Zandt, who's our director of uh, uh, health information management are for us older folks, medical records, come in. We have made a change about a year and a half ago where we outsourced the department. I uh, just found that, you know, that was an easier way of keeping up with all the massive amount of changes. Company we went with just weren't meeting our needs and we had a long talk with them and they kind of agreed. We probably were a little more complicated than what, you know, they were used to working with. So. She did uh, bring in a proposal for a new company, probably starting in about 30 to 60 days. We got to kind of transition from the old company. Really excited. Uh, the new company has, uh, has experience dealing with critical access hospitals and also uh, coding for what's called the rural health clinics, which all of our physician practices have been converted to. So we hope to see you know, some improvements there in the coding. The better we code, then the better we get paid on the back end. So uh, kind of a long-term uh, projection, but we think it's going to be very beneficial to the hospital. Help us, you know, as we look to maximize our reimbursement because it's right now it's, it's difficult. Uh, you know, as we discuss when we go through the financials, you know, for every dollar we bill, we write off sixty-two cents. Right. It's tough for a business to run when you know the best you're ever going to get is maybe thirty, thirty-five percent of what you bill. So more we can maximize that get that better Insur insurance companies are getting very sophisticated uh they have departments uh, as big as our hospital just for how not to pay a bill yeah and uh, so you know it's, it's a game you got to play with them so we're hoping to kind of get on the front side of that and get that going here very quickly as we move into that transition one of the other things that we've discussed a little bit with the board yesterday Back in uh, 2020, you know, the government was sending everybody just piles and piles of money, yeah. but never told us how we could use it. So right. we've been sitting on it. So we we still got you know several million dollars just set aside. We're finally getting some information out that says you can apply these expenses to that. So we're hoping to have that finalized sometime this year. We're yeah, at one point we thought we we're going to, have to send back a lot of that money. Fairly confident now we're going to be able to keep it because one of the things they've allowed us to do now is go back and calculate what was our lost revenue for those times when we were basically shut down, it was emergency only, and then the uh, extra supplies we had to buy as far as all the protective equipment and everything for the COVID. So we think we're going to be in pretty good shape on that. We're hoping to have that finalized next two to three months. So that's going to, from a financial perspective, really help us out and bolster that bottom line because we've spent a lot of money on uh, you know gowns and masks and gloves and hand sanitizer with no reimbursement to cover that. So it's money going out with nothing coming in. Right. Hopefully it'll offset a lot of those expenses with some of the, it's called a provider relief funds. So excited to finally get some direction from the federal <laughs> government. We have two CPA firms helping us with that. Even they're saying, well, here's our best guess. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's a very complicated mess that we're in. Looking good, I think we're gonna get to keep most of the money we've set aside. You know, we've had uh, several million sitting out there in the savings account. I think we probably got like eight dollars and four cents on interest. You know, I mean, it's not much interest being right. paid, but at least the money sit there, <coughs> and we don't have to send it back. We're hoping. Right. Finally, got into the, the financials for the month of, of June, and we had gross revenue about thirteen point five million. Our infamous deductions from revenue, our write-offs, was about eight point six. 
So again, writing off about 63, almost 64% of what we bill, we have to write off through contractual arrangements with the insurance company. They just say, you can bill us what you want, here's what we're going to pay you, and we say thank you and move on. So it left us a net patient revenue about 4.9 million. Uh, had some operating expenses of about 5.3 million. Uh, oh, I got those backwards, sorry, those are backwards. So we actually had an operating income of 207,000. Non-operating income of about 126,000. So we was able to have a net income for the month of about 333,000. So again, we're starting to pick that up and we're kind of first half the year we lose money, the back half we start making it up. So yep. uh, year to date, we're almost a break even now, I think on a year to date perspective. So we're, we're projecting hopefully by the end of the year have a profit again, a small one, because uh, we take that money and reinvest it back into the building and equipment right. or whatever we need to do there. So hope that trend continues. Uh, we are seeing, you know, as everywhere else, a massive spike in COVID. Uh, the new Delta variant is out there. Uh, highly contagious. I think what we're seeing is actually more contagious than the, the original variant that first came out. Um, you know, vaccinations, I know that's a hot topic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, uh, you know, you need to get your vaccines. Uh, does that prevent you 100% from getting COVID? Nope. But if you do get it, it's like a, a nasty cold. You're not hospitalized, you're not on a vent or you don't die. So in promoting you, know, it's very highly get your vaccines. We're thinking hopefully by the end of this month, uh, the federal government's going to approve the Pfizer vaccine. Right now it's still on the emergency approval, so a lot of folks saying, I'm not getting it until it's approved. Right. So we're hoping that we see once they come out and say, yes, this is now fully approved, start getting that percentage of those who have got the vaccine goes up. Uh, you know, it, uh, it, it helps. I mean, it's, uh, there was an article I, I was reading today, it says, you know, the, everybody, you know, the COVID vaccine, it's not your suit of armor, it's your seatbelt. So when you think about it, yeah, it doesn't, not 100% effective, but if you do have the COVID, it's like that seatbelt keeps you from serious injury. So really, really recommend get your vaccine. Uh, you know, this county is still fairly low. Indiana's not that high on those with vaccination. So think about it. If it gets final approved, that's what you've been waiting on. Hopefully that's by the end of the month and uh, get your vaccine. And we can hopefully get past this at some point by the end of the year, first of next year. And you and I can both confirm uh, there are no microchips, your arm's not going to become magnetic. Yeah, I've tried to put a spoon on my arm, it doesn't work. I've, I've gone to, you know, getting uh, scanned at the vet clinics. I, there's just there's just nothing there. So, yeah. you know, uh, just because it's on Facebook does not mean it's true. I know it's hard to believe, but it, uh, you know, get that vaccine. It, it does help protect not only you, but your family and your friends. So yeah. I highly recommend it. One of the other things that we're seeing now is kind of in Indianapolis and kind of south of us, a little bit here is that uh, a lot of hospitals are going what's called diversion. So they just can't take any more inpatients. And it's not just because they're so full of patients, they don't have any staff. We're seeing a mass exodus of nursing and respiratory therapists getting out of healthcare. They just said, I've had enough, I can't take it anymore. So it's very difficult to find staff right now, and we haven't really seen a lot of that here. Uh, two weeks ago, most of the Indianapolis hospitals were all on diversion. They, they said, we can't take any more patients. Uh, my daughter works at a hospital in southern Indiana. She said they were getting patients anywhere from three to 500 mile radius were coming wow. into their hospital because nobody else was taking in patients. So, I mean, that's, that's a burden on the family if you live here and all of a sudden we say, well, you got to go to a hospital in Louisville. Right. You know, it, it's just a real burden, but uh, it, it's, it's getting worse as we move on as far as more and more of the folks getting uh, you know, out of healthcare, just saying, we're not doing it anymore. Uh, hopefully they get out for a while, maybe refresh and come back. We're seeing a little bit in the South Bend and Fort Wayne market every now and then we'll try to ship somebody up there and they say, well, we don't have a bed right now means they don't have staff. Right. So we might have to hold somebody here 6, 10, 12 hours. I think the longest we've held somebody in our ER was 17 hours waiting for an, a bed somewhere else. But I think it's going to get worse as we move on. So it's something we're watching very, very closely. And, you know, how do we fix that problem? I just don't have the answer. We're hoping, though, that we start seeing a break. Maybe some of the, the peak in COVID right now is going to 
go away again and start opening up some of those so that what staff is in the hospital is able to take those patients that we need to ship there. So uh, again, vaccines make a difference. It keeps you out of the hospital and we're just facing a mass shortage in healthcare professionals right now. And you know, I look for that to be there for a while. Uh, just when you start looking at the nursing schools and there's just, students aren't going into it. They're, they right. just don't have the enrollments that they've had in the years past. So it takes a while for that pipeline to fill back up as we yeah. move through that. So, uh, you know, if you're a high school senior right now and you want a career, nursing might be something that once you, you know, you can get a two-year degree or a four-year degree, uh, almost guaranteed when you come out, you'll have a job. And uh, they, they pay fairly well for nursing. So, you know, if you're thinking of something and you like the health care, you can, uh, call one of our nurses, talk to them. You know, they're, the bad part is they're going to tell you the horror stories, but there is a you know there's a good part to it also is that you know you, you are helping your your family and, and friends, and if that's something to look to, highly recommend you know checking into looking into healthcare, especially the nursing, respiratory therapy is another field that you know you can get into. So uh, think about it, kids. If you're looking for a job in the future, that's going to be I think several years we're going to see a mass shortage in that area. And you know, as an administrator, you hate to say it, but whenever there's a shortage, that means the wages go higher and higher because you have the demand and less people to fill that, you have to pay more money to get them to come in. Yeah, absolutely. So that was kind of the board meeting. Uh, again, we're kind of off schedule a little bit, so it kind of threw everybody off a little bit. So uh, kind of just covered the basics and that was about it. So a fairly short meeting. All right. Well, uh, thank you for stopping by. Um, we'll talk to you again here in about three weeks it's yeah. not too far <laughs> off now so hopefully we'll get back on schedule and we can kind of keep that way for a while all right well thank you very much mr alley we'll thank see you, you again